The city of Cologne, located in the North Rhine-Westphalia state of Germany, is home to the Kölner Dome, or the Cologne Cathedral, the largest Catholic cathedral in Northern Europe. Within this cathedral, behind its altar, is the Dreikonigen Shrine, or the Shrine of the Three Kings. A silver and gold-plated reliquary, it holds the skeletons of the three magi, who, according to the Book of Matthew, visited the infant Jesus after his birth to bring him gifts. The Shrine of the Three Kings features over 30 Christian and biblical figures, all covered in gold and surrounded by intricate inscriptions and decorative jewels. The Cologne Cathedral, receiving the relics of the Three Kings, made it a landmark for Catholic pilgrimage to the West, and one man is responsible for their acquisition. Reinhold von Dossel was an archbishop from 1159 to 1167 CE and was named the Chancellor of the Holy Roman Empire. He was condemned by Pope Hadrian, but the most loyal and important advisor to Emperor Frederick I, named Barbarossa, or Redbeard, in Italy. When Barbarossa was victorious in Milan after a rebellion, von Dossel asked for the relics of two martyrs, Felix and Nabor, and the coffin containing the skeletons of the three kings, which had been discovered outside of Milan a few years prior. In 1164, the relics were brought from Milan to Cologne and placed in a pre-existing old cathedral, which was becoming dilapidated. The Cologne Cathedral, as we know it today, was built in place of the old cathedral, when it was seen as necessary to honor the relics with an extravagant cathedral as a center for religious pilgrimage. The Cologne Cathedral is a Gothic-style cathedral, shaped like a cross from above, with a central nave. The Shrine of the Three Kings is the largest medieval shrine, with the dimensions of 1.53 by 1.1 by 2.2 meters. It has two layers, an upper and a lower. The upper holds the relics of the martyrs Felix and Nabor and of Gregory Spoleto, another martyr whose remains already belong to the former cathedral. The lower layer, which can be peered into through a grilled window, contains the relics of the Three Kings. The shrine is made of gold and silver, with 304 engraved and unengraved gems. The front of the shrine is made of pure gold, and the other sides are made of gold-plated silver. The shrine was made by Nicolas of Ferdon, a French artist known for his excellence and precision as a goldsmith and enamelist. The front of the shrine is the most elaborate and ornate of the sides. It shows three narratives, the Adoration of the Magi, Baptism of Jesus, and the Ascended Jesus at the Throne. The narrative closest to the contents of the shrine are found at the bottom left. The three kings approach an enthroned Mary holding an infant Jesus to adore the child and bring him gifts. The three wise men are portrayed as an old man with a long beard, a young man who is beardless, and a middle-aged man with a short beard, carrying gold, frankincense, and myrrh respectively. The narrative of the three wise men exists only in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1-15. through 15. Additionally, in this part of the frieze, a fourth king can be seen, also holding a gift of gold. There is an inscription behind him, Otto Rex, showing that he is Otto IV of Brunswick, crowned king in Aachen in 1198 by Archbishop Adolf I of Cologne. This image in the frieze shows a depiction of real-life events. In 1200 CE, Otto held a feast of the Epiphany in Cologne and donated three gold crowns for the skulls of the Magi, giving a gift of gold in the name of Christ. He himself does not have a crown in the frieze, but by seeing, being seen as royalty bringing gift, he inserts himself into the biblical narrative. Above the Magi, similar to the inscription of Otto Rex, are their names, Balthazar, Melchior, and Caspar. Behind the grill on the front side of the shrine, a viewer could look in and see the, see the three crown skulls. Written in gemstones in front of the crown skulls are again their names. The grill is often closed, covered with a solid gold plate called the trapez plata. When open, the shrine would have a grilled window rather than a plate. After its completion, it would be open to the public on Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, and on several special occasions. This Feast of the Epiphany, the Day of the Death of the Third King, January 11th, and the Day of the Translation, July 23rd. On the opposite side of the bottom frieze, to the left of the enthroned Mary, is the Baptism of Christ. John the Baptist is at his left side with an arm on his shoulder, and perhaps Peter or Andrew is the other figure in the frame. In all of the images of Jesus on the shrine, he is flanked on either side by a figure. This contributes to the motif of the Trinity in Christian imagery and the recurrence, visual balance, and importance of the number three. The upper part of the front of the shrine shows Christ enthroned in heaven, appearing at the Last Judgment. He has an angel on either side of him, an angel on the left holding a circular host and a goblet for wine, symbolizing transfiguration and the body and blood of Christ. The angel to the right is holding a crown, symbolizing Jesus as the King of Kings in Revelation chapter 9, verse 16. Jesus holds a scroll, or an open book, with a Latin inscription, Liber Vitae, meaning Book of Life, with the list of names God has kept of those deserving to enter heaven, found in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, and Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. The 
The back panel of the shrine, although only silver plated and gold, is equally extravagant and detailed in its depiction of the life of Christ. The bottom left section shows the flagellation of Christ on the road to Calvary. He is tied to a column and on either side of him appears to be a soldier with a bundle of sticks or a weapon for whipping. The soldiers seem pleased and Jesus' face is downcast in sorrow and suffering. To the right of this section is the prophet Jeremiah holding an open scroll with a Latin inscription. The bottom right shows the crucifixion of Jesus. To the left of him is a woman, most likely Mary, and the right of him is a man, possibly John the Apostle from the moment in John chapter 19, verses 26 through 27. In the triangle above, there is a small bust of a figure who is Reinald von Dossel, the man who brought the relics to Cologne. It is a recognition and immortalization for his dedication to the city and its religious importance. Being put at the center of the panel is telling of his role as a catalyst for the city becoming a center for Christian devotion. The top triangle of the back panel shows Jesus with his hands outstretched to a figure on either side of him. These men are Felix and Nabor, the two martyrs whose relics are also laid in the shrine. They are dressed as soldiers with chainmail and shields, and Jesus is wearing a crown, accepting them into heaven as martyrs. The two longer sides of the shrine have sculptures of 24 figures. 22 are men, one is a cherub, and one a seraphim. The top rows are the 12 apostles, and the bottom rows are important figures of Christianity in the Bible. The David side, on the top row of apostles from left to right, has Paul, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, the cherub, Bartholomew, Simon, and Philip. The second row has Moses, Jonah, Obadiah, David, Daniel, Joachim, and Jeremiah. The Solomon side, on the top row of apostles from left to right, has Thomas, Judas Thaddeus or Jude, John, the Seraphim, James, son of Zebedee, Andrew, and Peter. The second row has Amos, Nahum, Joel, Solomon, Ezekiel, Habakkuk, and Aaron. Judas Iscariot is not present, but replaced by Paul, an unofficial apostle but placed on the row of the apostles for his role in writing the Bible. Of these 22 men, 14 of them have their own books in the Bible. The extravagance of the Shrine of the Three Kings brings into question the motivations of those behind its construction. Reinald von Dossel, Otto IV, Nicholas of Verdun, and those who have conserved and repaired it over hundreds of years. The 12th century saw a rise in the desire to see and be visibly presented objects of faith. In response to this, the host and the wine were lifted up at sermons. In devotional art, angels were increasingly depicted holding up objects to be venerated, and relics were made visible through windows or cases of crystal. With the rise in interest of seeing objects to observe their sanctity, an object such as the Shrine of the Three Kings and its visibility to the viewer was incredibly important to the culture of pilgrimage and worship. Reinald von Dossel knew of the importance of a Christian cultural city to have relics and objects of veneration. Otto IV recognized the significance of being part of the narratives. In placing himself on the shrine, he was encouraging pilgrims to see royalty as a part of the devotion and see themselves as an important element of Christianity. Nicholas of Verdun, his workshop, and craftsmen who have worked on the shrine knew that it had to be incredibly beautiful to be worth traveling to, and to meet their quests of kings, it had to be executed at a level of magnificence, both aesthetically and spiritually.